she's going to learn most, grow the most, develop the most in the areas she's already strong. Your strengths are where you're going to learn and grow and develop the most. That's the one concept that the best leaders all seem to share, and it's an ROI thing, isn't it? David Ricardo, the 18th century British economist, said that there is a law of comparative advantage. The best countries figure out their comparative advantage and leverage it. Peter Drucker, famous management theorist, said the best companies get their strengths together, make their weaknesses irrelevant. Have you heard that? It's a lovely construction. All one's saying here is the same to your people. The best leaders seem to realize every one of you in this room has strengths, and I'm sorry, you've all got weaknesses too, so where am I going to spend my time? This concept would simply say you're going to spend most time in the area where, like if you have it painted, I guess, like this, we want performance, you got strengths, you got some weaknesses, where do we spend most time? Not all time, where do we spend most time with you? I've only got time as your leader or as your coach or as your parent. Where do you spend most time? The best leaders would say you spend most time here because you're going to get a better ROI. I mean, it's, it's not even moral. It's just pragmatic. I'm going to get a better return if I invest here, which when I say it is just a crashing glimpse of the obvious until you start asking people that question. So if you ask people in the US that question, you just ask them that exact question, where should you spend most time? 41% of people in the US go with strengths, 41%. In Britain, where I'm from originally, 38% go with strengths. Canada, 38% go with strengths. France, who cares about France? Um, <laughs> all the, <laughs> whenever I get that, I just can't resist not saying that. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I love the French, but anyway, 35%. France, all the way down to the two least strengths focused nations in the world, Japan and China, 24%, 24%, right? So yeah, okay, US is different than Japan and China. Okay, cultural differences. Uh, but there isn't a single country where more than 50% go with strengths, guys. Not a single country in the world. Misquote Madonna, we live in a remedial world. We live in a remedial world. We live in a world that is fascinated by this, that tends to take this for granted. Why do we do that? By the way, I thought Gen Y would be the antithesis of that. Gen Y? Some of you are Gen Y. I thought, you know, come on, pretty cosseted pres uh, generation Gen Y. Pretty overpraised, perhaps even. Generation that got a prize for coming in seventh on the sports field. <laughs> well done, you. You were seventh. She was eighth, not you. Seventh, you were. Very volunteerist generation, Gen Y. Actually believe they can make a difference in the world. Poor fools. But they, <laughs> sorry, it's Gen X. Like, we were jaundiced at 15, weren't we? Though Gen X is in the room, right? <laughs> We were pretty sure the world was going to hell in a handbasket. It was just a matter of time. So now we're cowering in the corner, waiting for the world to collapse. But Gen Y is like, hey, no, we can do it. Um, so I thought, right, you have that generation. You think, well, gosh, if you ask them this question, they're going to go with their beautiful, strengthy strengths. Uh, no, they're the most remedial of all the generations. Right, they're the most remedial. Jenny says that, that you don't actually call them millennials. We actually call them uh, the teacup generation because they're superficially shiny, the veneer of confidence, and then you drop them, they shatter. And so you're, not you maybe, but we're hiring them from the dark blue bar, not the light blue bar. Most of the people joining the world of work right now have much more fascination with who they aren't and how to fix it than who they are and how to leverage it. And you get them as clients, maybe not now immediately, maybe they're too young, but you'll get them. And they don't know what it takes to excel. They don't. They're 24 and they don't know. Why is that? Why are we so fixated on, if you look at this, why are we so fixated on the weaknesses versus the strengths? You may, and we can take questions on this, because this is, I don't have the answer to this. What I can do is show you the data. But I can give you one theory, one little theory, and then we'll move on. Fear. We are more fearful of our weaknesses than we are honoring of our strengths. In psychology, we say, you know, if someone's fear, you'll know their need. I fear my weaknesses. I need to fix them. 